G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists do what they do. Well, hi folks. Well, we are in Murrumbateman today. Murrumbateman is about 25 minutes uh, from Canberra, Australian Capital Territory. And we were, are with a master pastelist, Amanda McLean. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Graham. Great to be here. Now, Amanda's got a very interesting history. I mean, she's a local girl coming from the whole of this area, uh, but originally was a graphic designer for television and basically went from television into um, pastels and art and became you know, one of Australia's great master pastel artists and has been doing this for 30 years, has been teaching for 20 years. But your first inspirations really came from your mum and dad. That's who right. were, uh, your dad was a sketch artist and your mum was a potter and literally brought up in the Tumid area. That's right. Which yeah. is about two hours south of where Canberra is. It's a really, really pretty area. Um, tell me about the upbringing with your dad and his influence, but also the fact that you are a fantastic landscape artist seascape artists. I mean, there's obviously a lot of love for the local landscape and that was really a, a passion that was given to you by your father. That's right. Well, both my parents. Um, as a child, I spent a lot of time in the bush yeah. um, and I was always really frustrated by the feelings that I had and I didn't really understand it until I started to paint. That was just my way of connecting yeah. with the landscape uh, and uh, yeah, I just love it. That's beautiful. I mean, it's, a, it's a magnificent area. And when you see Amanda's work as we go through, she really is incredibly, incredibly creative at what she does. We do need to thank some people. I mean, part and parcel of what we do these days is sort of reaching out to the art communities and the artists, but there are a lot of people that are gathering around us these days, even with Amanda assisting you on being part of the show. Uh, and that would be Mr. Eddie Tillotson from Framing Pieces, uh, which is a fantastic store in Canberra. It's probably one of the best uh, stocked art supply and frame stores in Canberra and also Mr. Graham Shaw from the Shaw uh, Vineyards Estates in this local area. They've actually stepped up and assisted Amanda in being part and parcel of Colour in Your Life, so we'd really like to thank them. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through as well. And Amanda's also been part and parcel in designing some fantastic pastels themselves. She's worked with Art Spectrum in doing that, and also designing some fantastic pastel papers as well. Uh, so you're gonna get some fantastic knowledge from this lady. She's been involved in a number of situations as far as developing the actual products themselves. So I'm going to step out of here and I'll let Amanda talk to you. Okay, Amanda, well, I know that you're using Pastel Premier Paper there, which is a fantastic paper. It's made by Handbook Paper Company, which was recommended by National Art Materials, who you actually work closely with as well. Um, why do you like that particular paper? It's quite different to any of the other papers I've used. I can only describe it as grabby. It has a, a fine texture and you don't need to put a lot of layers, so it's great for demonstration pieces, but um, it, it makes correct, you can make corrections on it very, very easily. Well, probably most people aren't aware that the actual tone of the paper really is the foundation of the way that the pastel is going to go anyway. Choosing your paper is really important. Uh, if, you, if you get the paper colour wrong, you can still create a lovely picture, but if you get the paper colour right, your picture's half painted before you even start. And a great example of that is the uh, burgundy colour fix paper by Art Spectrum, which is obviously a burgundy colour. And you've got a picture called Fink River. And the majority of that burgundy that you see in that picture is actually the paper itself. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. That's the paper working beautifully for you as it should. Yeah, um, that's amazing. I, I don't see the point in using um, a coloured ground if you're going to cover it all up. No, so I did notice even before we go any further that you've got a little pocket that you've made because obviously pastels. They create a lot of dust. Lot. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, I use butcher's paper so I can just scribble my colours or clean my pastels or test colours, but the, the, the little lip at the bottom, yeah. um, which is just pinned up, uh, collects the dust. That's a great idea, absolutely great idea. So where do we go from here? 
Um, so I'm going to start to block in this picture, which mm -hmm. is, it was a place called Tumut Plains, and it's very near to where I grew up. So um, yeah, I'm just going to start, I always start at the top and um, just rough in. And that's a great idea, you've got a photo, you've got a couple of photos, but you've also got one of the, um, is it an iPad? iPad, yeah. Yeah, fantastic idea, because one gives you the shape and the consistency, but the light coming through on the iPads makes such a difference, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, and, and, and I've got you know a, a, a copy on just regular paper, I've got a photograph, and they all give you different aspects of the light, um, so I tend to use what's available to me. I usually just start at the top and work my way down. It's, I guess you don't have to do that, but that's just something that I like to do. And Amanda, I think part of the reason that you love pastels is the immediacy um, that these colours give you. That's right, it's what you see is what you get. There's no drying time. Uh, it's very uh, tactile. Yeah, a little bit like that, laying down a tapestry of, of colours initially and then building it up from that's there. That's right, you're basically just drawing yourself a map to show you what's where. Uh -huh. And once you've got that map drawn, the rest is relatively easy. Now these mid-tone greys that you're working with, yes. you actually helped design those through with Art Spectrum. I did, yeah. I did. Uh, a lot of these um, colours are greyed versions of colours that I kept reaching for but they weren't necessarily there and so I made them myself mm -hmm. and uh, shared the recipes with Art Spectrum and they're now making them in these new uh, square range of softer pastels than their regular range. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful colours. Uh, not necessarily pretty mm -hmm. and people tend to buy pastel sets based on how pretty they are. Uh, they're the colours that you don't use. You know, you look at a set after you've been using it for a few years, the ones that are the most used are the ones that aren't the pretty colours. They're grey, they're just ordinary colours. But they're the ones that make the bright colours sing. So how many colours did you actually do with them? There's about 33, I think, shades wow. in this new range of 180. Uh, really useful colours. Well done, absolutely well done. On paper that you helped design as well. <laughs> it doesn't get much better, does it? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just working with um, lots of shades of grey. I do a lot of cloudscapes and I rarely use white. It's just a nothing colour. And it's really about just putting the foundation down without rushing the process. That's right. It's probably the slowest part of the, the work, but you really need to get it right. If you don't get it right, you'll struggle. I always advocate that you keep the picture as loose as you can for as long as you can. You know, I think a little bit like watercolours as well is that people get so nervous. Um, more so with watercolours because if you make a mistake it is hard That's to right. There fix. it is. But with, with pastels it's really not that way, is it? It's, it's pastels are very forgiving. There's, there's really not much that you can't fix. Yeah, I mean there's some of the stuff that you've, uh, you've done is really quite beautiful. Uh, being brought up in the Riverina myself as a young man. Uh, the piece Murrumbidgee Backwater and those um, fantastic refractions and reflections in the water that you get there, it's quite amazing. Oh, yeah, I love to, uh, clouds and water, they're, they're my favourite subjects. So pretty. So I'm just going to start blocking in the trees now, and these are my darkest darks. So explain the difference, uh, if you could, to me and to the folks out there, um, soft pastel and hard pastel, and, and, and what does it do for you in the picture? I, I predominantly work, work in soft pastels, but there's degrees of softness in the pastel spectrum, I suppose. Um, I prefer the pastels at the harder end of the soft pastel spectrum because it allows me to build up lots of layers and glaze and, and yeah, it, it just suits the style. So I have noticed since you've actually started this that you actually didn't put a sketch down at all. No, I, I rarely draw in. Um, you may notice I've, I've got some marks around the edge of my um, paper yeah. and I, I also put the marks around the edge of my picture so it's, it's just a cue so that I know where my thirds are because for compositionally um, your focal point should fall on the intersection of your thirds um, and also so that I know where the middle is so I can keep the focal point away from the middle because it does tend to gravitate there um, but I, I use the marks 
so that I can say, right, this tree comes to just below the, that third line. Um, it just helps me with uh, placing the, the elements in the picture. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of your pieces are either very long vertically or very long horizontally. You've got one called Hidden Valley Woodlands, which is a really beautiful piece. Uh, it looks like a dam or a, or a little lake, but the colours, the way that the colours are dappled on the water and even the shadows, Really a gorgeous piece of work. Yeah, that was um, a, a commission for somebody who was retiring. And uh -huh. It was a, a little little dam at the back of their property just here in, in Murrum Bateman. One of the great parts about coming to Murrum Bateman is being part of your workshops as well. And yes. you've, you've done some fantastic workshops. Now, Norfolk Island, for a start, mm, you know, that going over there, fabulous. It's, a, it's a pretty place, isn't it? Oh, gorgeous. Just Everywhere you look, there's something to paint. Just beautiful. And uh, how many people do you normally take on those excursions? Um, it's limited to 12. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we, I think last time had about 16. We had some partners as well. Yeah. And they all went off and had a lovely time fishing and doing all sorts of different things. Just there's so much to see there. It's really a fascinating place. Yeah, it's very pretty. So for anybody out there across the world that would like to come to Norfolk Island or even... Um, uh, the area that uh, Amanda lives in. Murrum Bateman's a beautiful place as well. Mm. And you're also doing overseas trips as well with people doing pastels. So, uh, you know, if anybody would like to inquire, uh, what's your website again, Amanda? It's www.amandamclean.net. There you go. Come in and see Amanda and uh, ask her about those fantastic workshops. So one other thing that you have done over the years is you've written many, many articles for various uh, art magazines, uh, Australian Artist Magazine and International Artist Magazine. Yeah, I've written yes, extensively um, and most of the articles I've written are about, well they're instructional. Mm -hmm. It's not just um, about me as an artist. Mm. Um, and, and I get a lot of feedback from people that, that they really appreciate the uh, instructional aspect of it. Yeah, and I've heard people say that you're uh, your instruction is very positive and empathetic and generous towards the knowledge that you give to people as well, which is extremely important. Mm. I mean, when I teach, I don't set out to, to create a clone of myself because that's ridiculous. But mm -hmm. everybody, everybody's style is different. What I do is encourage and um, support and you know, just, just give feedback constantly as people are working yeah. um, I, 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 and share my knowledge. I, I think, well, what's the point of keeping it to myself. Yeah, I think part of uh, the philosophy of your teaching as well as just simply to enjoy doing this. Exactly, yeah. It, that's, yeah. People stress about that, you know, and, and, and expect to be great right from the start. Yeah. And, and it's more, once again, it's a bit of a cliche, but it's, it's about the journey. Um, and, and every picture is a voyage of discovery. Mm. Sometimes, rather than slavishly copying a photo, at some point I like to just take the photo away and listen to what the painting tells me. Mm -hmm. Because there are things happen and you think, oh, that's a really nice effect, I like that. And you can pursue that. And it maybe isn't happening in the actual reference work, but it can take you somewhere that you've never been before. And that's, that's kind of a nice thing to do. Yeah, a great way to uh, record your life and your, and your journeys. And well, I like to do that, like I use my sketchbooks a lot. I, I sketch most days and, and that's, a, you know, it's a record of my life. You actually mm. do sketchbook workshops. I do. Pastel. Yeah. yeah. I actually teach um, sketchbook making mm -hmm. where you can put the, the papers that you particularly want into um, your books. But I use them, like this one was um, my holidays um, for, for the year and all the lovely places that I went to. Um, you know, there's Broome and Norfolk Island. This, these, this is the, the sketchbooks that I make. And these are actually separate workshops that you do apart from teaching the pastel. Yes, yes, sketchbook workshops. Yeah. Because I, I think they're just, it's being, your self-expression is really important and, and just, I think everybody should sketch. Yeah, it's a great idea, it's absolutely. Lovely, yeah. Uh, so if anybody wants to find out about your master uh, pastel workshops, uh, they can go to your website once again. www.amandamclean.net Okay, go in there and have a look at that, guys, because they're very, very worthwhile. And the area that Amanda lives in is absolutely beautiful as well. I mean, so many scenic places that you can 
go to to get fantastic inspiration. So absolutely go in there and um, put that on your bucket list without a doubt. <laughs> yeah, you seem to be really good at, um, well, a lot of things, but two is clouds and the other to me is the reflections. And you've got another two pieces that I'd love to bring up. The Murrumbidgee Boambolo. Boambolo, <laughs> yeah. Boambolo, I got that right. Um, just the magnificent reflections in that and the sheep on the other shore. I mean, it looks like you could walk down to that and just swim in that water. It's amazing. And then the other one is uh, Uriara Corridor. Uh, once again, a fantastic piece displaying, you know, what a true master of uh, water reflections can do. Oh, look, I find water so relaxing and calming. You know, just being near it. Mm -hmm. I love it. I mean, one thing from working with photos is that you've got to be um, careful that you don't fall into those really dark darks that they have in photos, which a lot of people do. Yeah, well, photos, cameras normalise the light. So they, you know, you get the light at the expense of the, of the shadow or the shadow at the expense of the light. So, um, you know, if you're going to work from photos, you've got to understand that, you know, that black hole isn't a black hole, it's actually got things in it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's a bit of a trap for, you know, when you're working with photos to not, not just slavishly copy them. You have to have experience working plain air is just invaluable. You see so much more than the camera does in terms of colour and So how do effects. you find um, plain air with pastels? It's okay? It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's a bit challenging, um, but I think, you know, working plain air is challenging for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, it's lovely. Pastel's great. You know, you, you don't have to carry water with you. Yeah. <laughs> you and you don't have to worry about wet pictures. You may notice I've stuck in an extra tree here. That's called artistic license and you're allowed to use it. I just felt that it helped to balance the picture a little better. Blending's one of a myriad of techniques with pastel but everybody seems to think that you need to rub, rub mm -hmm. it in or blend it. The texture of the paper is really important because pastel you can't apply in pasto, so you don't get texture. Yeah. You have to use the texture of the paper to give the illusion of texture. Mm -hmm. So if you're um, covering up the entire surface of the, past the paper and then, and then rubbing it, um, you lose that texture and once you've lost it, it's pretty hard to get it back. I always strive in a picture for, for contrasts, so contrast of, of texture. So you can have some smooth areas and some textured areas. Contrast of tone or value, so you know you darken your light. Contrast of colours, so if I've got a lot of blue then I'll make sure that I put something that's complementary, so a little bit of orange in there somewhere. Yeah, I mean that's a good example. With the picture, uh, the road to Wee Jasper, you can actually see a lot of the paper coming through yeah. the clouds. You haven't covered the whole thing up by yeah, any means. Yeah, that's right. So contrast of temperature too, so warm and cool. It's, all, it's like a, the balance, the yin and the yang, you sort of have to have the opposites. So um, contrast of temperature, so you've got cools and warms in your work. Now there is a different way of framing pastels compared to other pictures. And uh, Eddie Tillotson from Framing Pieces in Mitchell in Canberra, it's got to be the best art store in Canberra. They've got a whole bunch of stuff there, but Eddie does your work. Um, What's the difference between normal frames and pastel frames? Um, pastels need, they need space between the glass and, and the picture. Um, they also um, need a bit of space between the mount and the actual picture because pastel, being a powdery medium, will rub off on the edge of your mount. So um, you put a, a separate mount that you don't see in behind your mount that just keeps, it just gives you an extra layer between um, your picture and, and, and the mount. That if, if, if there is any dust falls off, um, it will fall into that little space, hopefully. Um, uh, yeah, it just um, just requires a little bit more care than than just you know framing a regular picture. Sure. So the shop's great. Um, there's a great range of art supplies and fine art supplies, not just um, student grade or craft stuff, but but. For serious artists, anything that um, you can't get or, or that they don't have, they'll get for you, mostly. Yeah, so for all of those um, budding artists and hobby artists and professional artists, um, go down to Framing Pieces and see Eddie. And get, it's a, basically a one-stop shop. So we're getting into the uh, 
latter stages of this picture. We're going to try and pull it all together. Still trying to keep it fairly loose. I just wanted to go over a couple more paintings. Got uh, Uriara Reflections, which is a magnificent piece as well. Dead trees in the water. And we also have one of Amanda's seascapes called the Shoreline to Malua Bay, which is a beautiful piece as well. Fantastic reflections on the water there. It's very, very nice. Yeah, I love, love seascapes. I love it. Uh, an excuse to go to the beach. So the Murrum Bateman area is also very well known for its wines. It's cold. Cool place. climate. Cool climate, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, once again, Graham Shaw from Shaw Winery's Vineyard Estate. Um, fabulous man who loves the art. He does. Big He's supporter, big supporter, of, big of, the supporter of you and the arts. Um, he needs uh, some applause for stepping up to the to the mark as well and being part and parcel of uh, your ongoing art exposure across the world. Yes, yeah, I'm very, very grateful. And actually they make really award-winning wines as well. Um, so if you wanted to go on and have a look at the uh, Shaw Wineries Vineyard Estate, uh, you can do that through... Uh, they, they have an online presence, so yep. yeah, making inroads their, across the world with their wines. Yeah, through their website and um, have a look at what they're doing. But fantastic area and great, great people to support the arts. I'm just using the edge of the pastel to roll on a few grassy edges. Uh -huh. The one second house. And that's it. Just a suggestion. Just a the suggestion. Rest, the rest of it's in shadow. Yeah. That's fantastic. Great, great piece of work. Thank you. Okay, fantastic day with one of Australia's master pastelists, Amanda McLean. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Uh, very, very impressive, guys. Uh, like I said, Amanda's one of those people that you really should have on your bucket list by any means. Your website is? AmandaMcLean.net. And we'd also want to thank, again, um, Framing Pieces with uh, Eddie Tillotson and also Graham Shaw from Shaw uh, Wineries and, and Vineyards, uh, also Art Spectrum, and also Pastel Premier Papers for being part and parcel of Amanda's show today. If it wasn't for people like that stepping up to be part and parcel of Colour in Your Life, I mean, this fantastic woman, a lot of other people wouldn't have a chance to be on the show, so we really thank them a lot. If you want to come and see more of these amazing people, you can come to colourinyourlife.com.au and come into our Facebook page, YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, we're on just about all of them these days. Uh, so for everybody out throughout the world, uh, Murrum Bateman, great place to be. Come and see Amanda, do a workshop with her. I think you'll really, really enjoy it. But until we see you guys again next time, remember, make sure you put some colour in your life and we'll see you next time. Bye now. See ya. Bye. Bye.